a cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, October 14, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I will provide an update on what is now Tropical Depression Sean and how its remnants may approach the northeastern Caribbean region during the middle of next week. Additionally, we will discuss Invest 94, which is likely to become Tropical Storm and Hurricane Tammy. It could pass dangerously close to the northeastern Caribbean. It's important for the northern Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico to stay vigilant about its development. It is projected to pass near or over the region during the next weekend. Let's briefly discuss Tropical Depression Sean. What was once Tropical Storm Sean has once again been weakening and is now a tropical depression. This weakening is due to shearing winds and dry, stable air affecting its circulation. It is projected to continue weakening over the next few days as it moves entirely westward. Between Wednesday and Thursday, it could approach the northern Lesser Antilles as a tropical wave, leaving an increase in humidity. However, as indicated by the National Hurricane Center, it is already projected to dissipate into a tropical wave on Sunday morning. There is no anticipation of reorganization as it passes near the northeastern Caribbean, so we should not be concerned about tropical depression Sean in the Caribbean region. The outlook is quite different for Invest 94, which continues to show signs of cyclonic development. The center of circulation is located near latitude 9 degrees north, which is extremely low. This could pose a risk to the northeastern Caribbean in approximately seven days. The National Hurricane Center has increased the probability of it developing into a tropical depression to 70% in the next 48 hours and maintains a 90% chance of development over the next seven days as it mostly moves west-northwest. In general, there is consensus that the center of circulation could approach the northeastern Caribbean in approximately six to seven days. The reason to stay vigilant in the northeastern Caribbean and Puerto Rico is that a long-term forecast can have a large margin of error, so it is currently impossible to know how far or close it will pass from the northeastern Caribbean. Furthermore, our concern is that intensity models continue to be very aggressive. By the middle and end of next week, it could strengthen rapidly into a powerful Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane as it approaches the northeastern Caribbean. And although it appears that it may pass about 50 to 75 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles at the moment, it is close enough for us to remain attentive to its evolution. Again, I repeat, it is anticipated to be a powerful hurricane when it passes near the region. Now, let's look at the global model forecasts. Let's start with the GFS model. Remember that the GFS model places this disturbance the farthest away. We hope that this is what happens, but I must tell you that the GFS model has been adjusting the initial intensity of the runs over the past few days. For this reason, it has had some adjustments a bit closer to the Caribbean region. This is the midday run today. Note that the GFS model predicts that by the evening of Monday, we may possibly have a tropical depression or tropical storm Tammy. The high pressure system in the Atlantic will remain very strong, which forces a westward path at least until Wednesday or Thursday. For Wednesday or Thursday, it is anticipated that the high-pressure system will begin to weaken somewhat, which could allow this future cyclone to take a more northwesterly path. The GFS model continues to project that it would pass about 300 to 400 miles northeast of the Caribbean, but it forecasts that it could be a powerful and dangerous hurricane when it passes through this area. On the other hand, we have the European model forecast, which has been very consistent in bringing this system much closer to the eastern Caribbean region. At the moment, it forecasts that it would pass about 100 to 150 miles northeast of the Caribbean. The good news is that the European model has adjusted its path a bit more to the right, and in the last two runs, it does not pass this dangerous future hurricane over the northeastern Caribbean region. However, it would pass close enough for us to continue monitoring its evolution. The major difference between the GFS and the European model is that the GFS model has a much slower system. For example, during Wednesday noon, the GFS predicts that Tropical Storm Tammy would be located in this area. Compare this to the forecast from the European model. The European model shows a faster translational movement, thus moving more to the west. This will be one of the factors we will be closely monitoring in the coming days. The faster it moves west, the greater the chances it will eventually reach the Caribbean. We also have the forecast from the UK model, which has a tropical storm passing over the northeastern Lesser Antilles with a very similar trajectory to the European model. However, the German model maintains a trajectory passing about 200 to 250 miles northeast of the Caribbean. The Canadian model has a trajectory very similar to the European model, affecting the islands north of the Lesser Antilles next weekend. In general, you can see that the models forecast that it could approach the northeastern Caribbean region. I understand that at the moment, the most likely scenario is that it will pass about 50 to 100 miles northeast of the Lesser Antilles, but the margin of error is quite large. 
it's important that we continue to be vigilant about its evolution, especially at this time when it's in an organizational process. It will also be crucial to see where the center of circulation consolidates. The further south it consolidates, the greater the chances it will reach the Caribbean. If it consolidates further north, it could take a path northeast of the region. We can see these different scenarios in the ensemble members of the GFS model. Note that today, all members project the center of circulation moving northeast of the Caribbean, but I must mention that the GFS model members have been adjusting their trajectories a bit closer to the eastern Caribbean. In comparison, the ensemble members of the European model today show that the majority of them also pass the future Hurricane Tammy right over or northeast of the Lesser Antilles, but closer than what the ensemble members of the GFS model show. In summary, we will be closely monitoring the evolution of Invest 94. The latest trends indicate that it is expected to pass very close to the northeastern Caribbean, but the final path will depend on where the center of circulation consolidates and how quickly it moves westward. Any deviation to the left could pose a greater risk to the Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico. Therefore, I ask that you remain vigilant over the next few days. Well, with that, I bid farewell, and I will be back with a new update tomorrow. Goodbye for now.